Welcome to Cake Playground, where it's all about the fun. This lesson is on how to make the perfect chocolate butter cake. Doesn't that look great? So let's gather your ingredients. You'll need measuring cups and spoons, sugar, flour, buttermilk, vanilla, cocoa, unsweetened chocolate, unsalted butter, baking soda, baking powder, and eggs. You will also need two 8-inch pans and some parchment and nonstick spray. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's cut out the parchment to line the bottom of the baking pan. This will really be helpful in having your cake not stick to the bottom of the pan. So trace around the outside of the pan on the parchment, cut out on the inside of the line till you have a nice circle, and then take that circle and put it inside your cake pan. To make doubly sure our cake does not stick, let's go ahead and spray with some nonstick spray on the outside edge and a little bit on the parchment. If the parchment lifts a little bit, press it down with your finger so the cake doesn't get underneath the parchment. Now we can start mixing our ingredients. Today I'm using a mixer, but you can use a bowl. I'm using a KitchenAid here. So we're going to measure a cup and a half of all-purpose flour. Let me show you how to measure it. I sprinkle the flour from a distance from a spoon into the cup so it packs lightly into the cup and then I level it with the back side of my spoon. Now don't do this, you'll get too much flour and you won't have a good result. Don't push the flour into the cup on the side of your bowl. It will just give you too much flour and you'll have a bad result. Put the flour into your mixing bowl. You will need one third cup cocoa. If you can find Dutch process, get it. It'll give you a deeper chocolatey taste. So just lightly sprinkle the cocoa into the cup and level off with the back of the spoon handle and pour it in the bowl. Next, you need to measure one and a half cups of granulated white sugar using the same method that we did for the cocoa and the flour. Scoop it up with a spoon, scrape it off with the back, pour it into the bowl. Measure one teaspoon baking soda, and you're going to use the box to level off that spoon and put it in the bowl. Also measure one quarter teaspoon baking powder and use the level on the side of the can. And then put that in the bowl. Now we're going to use one half cup of unsalted butter, and you want it kind of soft but not melted. So here it's a little bit firm so I'm going to put it in a bowl and put it in the microwave for only 10 seconds. You don't really want to melt it. See here it's a little melted on the side but it's just you just want it soft not melted. And then take that butter and scrape that into your mixing bowl also. You see here I'm scraping out every little bit with a spatula. And so you have the dry ingredients in the butter in the bowl and turn on your mixer at a low speed and mix until it's blended. When the butter looks like it's fairly mixed, lower your bowl and scrape the sides and the bottom with a spatula. This is a really important step. Next, we're going to melt one third cup unsweetened chocolate in the microwave. I only put it on for a minute. Chocolate burns really, really easily. You notice that when I took this out of the microwave, the shape of the chocolate had remained until I started stirring. There's even some little chunks here, but if you let it set and stir before you put it in the bowl, it will likely be melted. Just make sure that it's completely melted before you put it into the mixing bowl. If it's not completely melted, put it back in the microwave for like 10 seconds and then scrape out the bowl completely to make sure you're using all the chocolate in your yummy chocolate cake. And then turn on the mixer and mix the chocolate into the dry ingredients and butter. And then scrape down the sides and the bottom again. Really important. Next, you're going to add one half cup hot water. So turn on your mixer and slowly stream the water into the mixer. Add two large eggs. With the mixer running, slowly pour the eggs into the bowl and mix until incorporated into the rest of the batter. With the mixer still running, pour in one half cup of buttermilk. Add one teaspoon of vanilla. 
You'll see here that there's some buttermilk still left on the side of the bowl. So use a spatula to scrape down the sides and the bottom like we did before. I can't stress how important this step is. It really helps to incorporate all the ingredients. So give one final mix. And then we're going to lower the bowl and remove the paddle. And take it off the machine. Now I usually use my fingers to clean off the paddle. I just find it easier than the spatula. And then give one final scrape with the spatula to make sure everything's incorporated. Scrape the sides and the bottom. So now evenly divide the batter between the pans and scrape out the sides of the bowl with your spatula. And use your spatula to even out the batter in the pan. And now you're ready to put it in the oven at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes. After about 20 minutes, check for doneness. So let's look at it. You see here the cake's pulled away from the side of the pan. It springs back easily when I touch it with my finger and a toothpick comes out dry. This one, however, is not done. You see the indentation that's left? And when I put the pick into the cake, it comes out with wet crumbs. So we'll leave it in another five minutes and test. Now it looks done. And you'll see here that even though I pulled out one small crumb, that's a lot less than the last time. And that cake has pulled away a lot more from the side. So remove the cakes from the oven and put them on a rack to cool. After they've cooled about 10 minutes, you can unmold them. So loosen them from the side with a knife. I'm using a cake cardboard to turn this over. You can use a plate if you don't have one of these. Pull off the pan, pull off the parchment, and then reinvert the cake so it's sitting on its bottom. This will help to keep it from cracking on the top. And there you have a beautiful cake. Cut the cake and enjoy the perfect chocolate butter cake. Thank you for joining me in this lesson. Please come to CakePlayground.com for further recipes and lessons. Remember, at Cake Playground, it's all about the fun.